You know what happens next? We go racing! And as everybody launches their cars off the line and attacks, attacks, attacks as they run down towards the uphill first corner. The McLaren actually took him out there. Going into the first corner, Barrichello's got the inside line, he's slightly ahead as well. And Raikkonen just defenceless from the Ferrari OP. What about Schumacher? Is he going to make the move now? Raikkonen defending much better from Michael Schumacher than he did from Barrichello. And yep, Schumacher down the inside, and Raikkonen didn't really try and defend the inside line, and I think that's a mistake. And he's just going to get the run on Jarno Trulli. It should happen quite easily. And yeah, he has inside line. Raikkonen and Coulthard both outside the points, and Barrichello up into second place. Fantastic stuff. So the Jaguar 1 2 has been broken. Schumacher, is he going to get past Jarno Trulli? If he doesn't do it now, it's going to be difficult for him to, and he hasn't done it. Two corners left to go, Irvine's still got the lead. The last corner, and Eddie Irvine has held the lead from Rubens Barrichello. It's just a run to the line, and Eddie Irvine, he's just done it. Eddie Irvine wins the 2002 Austrian Grand Prix. Barrichello second, De La Rosa third, Jarno Trulli fourth. He held out for Michael Schumacher in fifth, and Jensen Button held on to sixth. A double point scoring finish for Renault. Welcome to the Principality and round seven of the 2002 FIA Formula One World Championship, the Monaco Grand Prix here in Monte Carlo. Narrow roads, high walls and very few overtaking areas make this a difficult race for all the drivers. And a good start is crucial if you want to be the first driver into Sandivot Corner. The Monaco Grand Prix is the race that every driver wants to win. And we can be sure that everyone will go out to secure the all-important pole position to improve their chances for the win. The Monaco Grand Prix requires full concentration by the drivers over the entire 78 laps. One small mistake and the car will end up in the barriers as runoff areas are virtually non-existent here. A single lap during the race itself covers 2.094 miles or 3.370 kilometres and the lap record is held by David Coulthard. Because of the low average speed, maximum downforce and mechanical grip are paramount to achieve good results. Due to the undulating surface, cars also have a tendency to bottom out, so the ride height is usually adjusted higher to compensate for this. Right then, so hey guys, it's PSL here, and I'm here for the seventh part in this Formula 1 2002 reverse grid race series. And it's the race we've all been waiting for, or at least the race I've been waiting for, Monaco. Now, Monaco is the one track which hopefully won't provide Ferrari dominance it's it should be every other track including like the likes of Hungary will probably go in favor of Ferrari massively but Monaco we could see maybe not a Minardi win but who knows I mean we've got Alex Jung on pole position full credit once again to Mark Webber for out qualifying both Jaguars um, Nick Heifel didn't do too well in qualifying so he's in sixth we could well see Sauber maybe get a podium this race, uh, who knows really. Honestly, I would run down through the grid, but I, I honestly don't know what to expect from this race. We could well see Ferrari dominance, but at the same time we might not. I genuinely don't know. It could go any other way. I mean, every other race I'm basically expecting um, Michael Schumacher or Barrichello to win this race. It's all up in the air. Anyone could do it. All I would say, though, is David Coulthard who won the Monaco Grand Prix in real life in 2002, led every single lap. So, basically, whoever it might well be a case of whoever leads the first lap leads every single lap. So, Alex Jung, you've got to do it, man. You've got to get off to a good start, a much better one than you got in Imola, because the start he had in Imola was horrific. So, yeah, let's just head on to Monaco. Hello and welcome to the 2002 Monaco Grand Prix. Before we look at the starting group for today's race, let's take a brief look back at last year's event. After David Coulthard was relegated to the back of the grid because of an electronics malfunction, Michael Schumacher stormed to a straightforward victory, followed by his teammate Rubens Barrichello, making it a memorable 1-2 finish for Ferrari. A well-deserved third place went to Jaguar Cosworth's Eddie Irvine, which sadly was also the last time we saw a Jag on the podium for the remainder of the season. Fourth was Jacques Villeneuve for BAR Honda, 
and David Coulthard drove a brilliant race to finish fifth for McLaren Mercedes from last, continuing his point scoring streak that started back in Australia. To everyone's delight, Jean Alesi scored Prost Ace's first point for a long time with a determined drive to sixth. It's the most famous start line shot in Formula One racing and we're going live any moment now to race at Monaco. Five sets of lights are on. Now they go out and we're racing down towards Sandivot. Let's hope there's no collision. Let's hope everyone can filter through safely. Very, very tricky conditions as the drivers launch their cars through that corner. Well, thank you, James Allen. And Alex de Jong once again got off to a horrific start. Eddie Irvine is long gone at this point. Nick Heidfeld, just as I suggested, could get a podium this race. He's already up into third place. He's got Young up ahead of him. Weber was battling out with his teammates, but he's now lost a place to Heifeld and uh, De La Rosa. So Irvine, oh no, Irvine's up, up into first. Wow, what a diving move from Nick Heifeld there. Fantastic stuff. Once again, I mean, in my F1 Championship Edition series, we saw Nick Heifeld made some very audacious moves, and he's done another one here at Monaco at the Lowe's hairpin. Fantastic stuff. So we still got Alex Young in third place. And I think once Della Rosa gets by, assuming he gets by very quickly, I think that could well be the top three for this race settled. Bernoldi making up places. Well done to Bernoldi. He's quite often started in he's quite often started near the front and dropped back very quickly. But no, he's putting in a good showing for arrows. I thought we were gonna see Irvine break down then. That would have been gutting. And going up to the final couple of corners in this lap and Alex Young is still holding third place and oh it's all just bunching up around here we got a Ferrari up in the mix already Michael Schumacher has moved up into 10th and he's taken out a Toyota oh come on Michael that's an illegal overtake you can't just pass the Toyota because of that okay and Frenson's down near the back but Bernoldi is near the front I mean Alex Young's still holding third from De La Rosa uh, Michael Schumacher now going to get past Mark Webber and okay so we might well see Ferrari dominance. I was quite hoping we wouldn't. But, um, well, look, Michael's still not in the points. He's got Massa, he's got Bernoldi, De La Rosa, Jung, Heifeld, and Irvine all to pass. I mean, and most of those guys are looking pretty quick around here. I mean, and Montoya up into ninth. Okay, and I mean, Alex Jung is doing an amazing job at defending. We've seen Jung has had no pace this season. We've seen he's got off to shocking starts, but the one thing he can do, and he can do better than anyone else on the on the grid, is defend. And boy, is he defending well now, going through the tunnel. He's still holding third place from De La Rosa. I mean, this is stopping Jaguar from getting a double podium at this point, but um, still got Bernoldi in fifth. Uh, I don't want to see the back of Reichland, but I mean, that is a sight you don't want to see. Barrichello all over the back of you, going into the back. And no, Rubens Barrichello hasn't done it. Okay, so we've still got Schumacher 7th, Massa, Bernoldi holding up a little train, but then so is Alex Jung. I mean, the top two, Heifeld and Irvine, pulling away at this point. As long as both of those guys don't have any reliability issues, I think those two are going to finish in their positions. I, I really am not liking how it keeps cutting to the back of the field. I don't want to see Fizzy Keller. I know the game normally cuts towards the back, but it's doing it all the time now I mean I guess it was quite useful there because we just found out Bernoldi's lost a couple of places uh oh don't restart the race no replay what did happen so Bernoldi was in fifth and then because the game kept cutting to look at different people uh, the next time we saw him he was in seventh okay so coming around the last corner still holding fifth he's still got Sauber and Ferrari up behind him though and it, geez the straight line speed that Aris has got is pathetic as yeah, by the time I head down to the first corner, and bearing in mind Monaco only a short start finish straight, and well, Bernoldi lost two places in that exchange. Really just disappointing for Arrows. I mean, I, mean, I know Frentz is at the back, but Bernoldi, he showed a glimmer of pace, and um, well, that's gone already. I mean, Michael Schumacher fifth. I genuinely wasn't expecting Schumacher to be up the field this quickly. I was thinking he might well be up this far. I was thinking he might be this far up, but not this quickly. And De La Rosa's done that same ambitious move that Heifel did on Jung, and wow, De La Rosa up into third place. Now what he needs to do is he needs Jung to hold up Michael Schumacher, and so De La Rosa can just pull away. 
So let's have a look. On board from Michael Schumacher, is he going to make a move on Alex Young? I mean, this should be the easiest move ever. A, a Ferrari on a Minardi in this game. And we've seen the Ferrari is overpowered, the Minardi is underpowered, and everyone else is just kind of there. I mean, um, but still... De La Rosa third, Heifeld and Eddie Irvine, they're coming up to to, um, to end the third lap, start the fourth lap. De La Rosa quite a way back, Alex Young a way back, but of course they're just all bunching up. Going round here, and in fact, who's that? That is Montoya, who's just out of nowhere, made to move on Michael and Alex Young. That is how you do it. Montoya, of course, he's known for his exuberant driving style, and boy has he done it there, and Barrichello's got past his teammate. Well, Michael Schumacher just caught napping there. And Alex Young, is he going to try and get back past? Yes, he will try, but he will not succeed. But, oh my word. Michael Schumacher was just caught napping. And Barrichello and Montoya just went straight past there. Fantastic. So, Alex Young, unfortunately, out of the point. So, it's Michael Schumacher, Bruns Barrichello, Montoya, De La Rosa. Okay, De La Rosa's, yeah, he's going to be coming under some threat now. Nick Heifeld second, Eddie Irvine first. And, I think... Much like in Brazil, I don't need to talk through all of it because, amazingly, this race has been one of the races where positions have stabilised out very quickly. I mean, in Imola, there's been overtakes all the time, but I mean, here there hasn't... It's just weird. The top six kind of has spread out already. Both McLarens up behind Alex Young, but it's not going to make a difference. Even if they get past Young, I don't see them catching up to the top six. So, unfortunately, I think it's going to be another... Pointless race for Kimi Raikkonen. Montoya. Barrichello sets a new fastest lap of the race. Well, he sets a new fastest lap and he gets past Montoya while doing it. Well done to Barrichello. And now Montoya's going to try and make the move back on Barrichello. Is he going to do it? Heading up the hill, round the left-hander, into the casino section. And we're seeing an epic battle between Montoya and Barrichello. How De La Rosa is keeping these two behind him, I will never know. Barrichello now back ahead, but going into the lowest hairpin. Montoya! What a move! Wow! That is extraordinary. We saw De La Rosa make that move on Alex Jung, and now Montoya's made the same move on De La Rosa. Oh my word, that was... Honestly, Montoya, that's the second exuberant move he's made all race. I'm surprised he hasn't crashed yet, but I mean, Barrichello's not got past as well. So, the top the top six, again, just to recap. Eddie Irvine, Nick Heifeld. Heifeld's been catching up bit by bit. So, Heifeld could mount a charge for the lead. Um, then it's Montoya in third. Barrichello fourth. De La Rosa fifth. And obviously, Michael Schumacher in sixth. But, Raikkonen has got past Young. What about, yeah, Coulthard has as well. So, and McLaren could get in the top six, but, hmm... Hang on, I'm sorry, what's that? I'm sorry, I can't believe what I'm seeing. The 2002 Formula 1 season and someone, in fact, two people have made an overtake on Michael Schumacher. Oh no, Kimi's moved in and stick, but Coulthard got past Michael Schumacher. In fact, no, Kimi, Kimi's got past Michael Schumacher again. And but now, Michael's brother, his younger brother, is going to make him look stupid. Because Michael Schumacher, not only has he failed to catch up to De La Rosa, I mean, genuinely, he was not even remotely catching up to De La Rosa. If anything, it almost seemed like De La Rosa was pulling away from him. I mean, look, I mean, look, De La Rosa's all the way up there. Michael didn't even come close to catching De La Rosa because he was too busy like, worrying about the McLarens. And then, suddenly, he, he doesn't pay attention. And Ralph Schumacher, who hasn't been all that great this series... I mean, look, Michael's dropping back from those guys. Michael must have some kind of car issue that he's nursing because he couldn't catch up to a Jaguar. Um, his younger brother and both McLarens have made him look... Oh, my word, are you kidding? I mean, I know Ralph wasn't competing for a point, but that's just cruel. Well, in fact, he was competing for a point because... I mean, if he got past both McLarens, it would have been a stretch, but if he got past both McLarens, yeah, he would have been in the points. Um, I, mean, it's, I mean, it's quite sad because Raikkonen was ahead of Coulthard, and now Coulthard got past Raikkonen. So it will be, again, another race where Raikkonen hasn't scored a point. Um, but moving up towards the field, because I'm sure, yeah, Eddie Irvine's coming up 
to end the race already. Um, this team, is, I mean, this race has been extremely dominated by the top teams. I mean, look, Montoya just coming into the mix as well. But despite how surprisingly dominant the top teams were in this race, Eddie Irvine has taken his second win in a row with Nick Heifeld. A very impressive second place finish, although considering where he qualified, not too surprising. Montoya third, Barrichello catching up to his teammate in the championship. He finished fourth. Pedro De La Rosa, quite a lonely race in the second half. He'll finish fifth. And sixth will be taken by David Coulthard after he, out on track, overtook and just resoundingly beat his teammate. And obviously Raikkonen seventh, Michael Schumacher eighth. Michael Schumacher fishing ahead of his brother, but... Now, nah, Michael, I mean, look, I mean, Trolley was catching up to him. I don't know what was up with Michael this race, or up with Michael's car, but no, he... This is not the Michael Schumacher we grew used to seeing in, in the late 90s, early 2000s. This was a completely different person. And Barrichello was doing alright, so I don't know what that was all about. Below Trolley, it was Benoldi, that's where he ends up. Young didn't actually finish too far down the field. Oh, uh, Weber! Weber did quite well. Jaguar is now in its third year in Formula 1 and apart from Eddie Irvine's third place at the Monaco Grand Prix last year the team has not lived up to expectations of the public and the media. So once again another interesting race this series and I am surprised by how quickly the overtakes came. I wasn't really expecting the top teams. I was expecting them to be near the points or in the points but I wasn't expecting them to get there so quickly Montoya, uh, Barrichello, uh, Michael Schumacher they were all up there very quickly and then Ralph Schumacher and both McLarens came later I'll tell you something I have noticed is Montoya has been much much better than Ralph Schumacher I mean you look at it both Ferrari drivers are quite equal both McLaren drivers are eerily equal they're always very close to each other on track but the Williams pairing seemed to have the biggest gap in terms of driver performance than any other team. I guess maybe Minardi, I guess Weber does seem to be quite a bit better than Alex Jung, but I'd say, even despite that, Montoya did very well to finish third and actually wasn't too far behind the leaders. And then Ralph Schumacher just wasn't really as good, although to be fair, Ralph Schumacher, the only retirement in this race, brutally unlucky. And actually just generally quite a bad day for the Schumacher family. So, what has that race done to the Drivers' Championship? Well, unfortunately, I was hoping it would mean that some of the lower teams would score some decent points. Um, no, it didn't mean that at all, actually. But it did mean Michael Schumacher didn't score any points, and basically everyone up behind him has caught up to him. Barrichello now only 12 points behind his teammate. Who on earth would have thought that Eddie Irvine, after Monaco, was going to be a serious championship contender? Third in the championship, only one point behind Barrichello. Below that though, Nick Heidfeld, second place, I said he could do well this race, and boy did he do well, second place, and he's still 7th in the Drivers' Championship, but only one point behind Ralph Schumacher, and as I said, Montoya seems to be so much better than Ralph Schumacher, and honestly, Ralph Schumacher, he's going to need to watch his back. So on to Constructors' Championship, and absolutely nothing has changed, Ferrari still leading the way, Jaguar catching up with Ferrari and pulling away from Williams. Williams in a solid third place in a moment. Sauber pulling away from the rest of the field. And I, I remember saying at the end of the Austria episode that we were seeing a good scrap between McLaren, Renault and Sauber. And unfortunately, I think Nick Heidfeld getting his second place this race, I think means that Sauber are going to be winning that battle, which is quite unfortunate. But still, Renault and McLaren in that fray. Of course, Toyota are as well. Toyota, less consistent points finishes. And uh, they're tied on points in McLaren now. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and now you won't be seeing the podium celebrations because as I said earlier on this series, for me to get the podium celebrations, I have to physically recreate the results myself. And as much as I would love to see Irvine, Heidfeld and Montoya on the podium together at Monaco, it just isn't going to happen unfortunately. So anyway, we're rapidly approaching the halfway mark of the season, and the next race will be the 8th race in the season at the Circuit Shield Villeneuve in Canada. My favourite track of the season, and one which is certainly going to play into the hands of the bigger teams, especially the ones with the powerful engines, so Williams will almost certainly be up there, Ferrari of course will be up there, McLaren could well be up there, and it could finally be the race that 
Kimi Raikkonen scores a point. So anyway guys, yeah, I'll see you next time for the Canadian Grand Prix. So I'll see you then.